two, one, and we're live. What's up? It's Mike Wall back with another episode of the Agent Revolution Podcast, the place where we deconstruct the biggest challenges facing today's real estate agents so that they can build a sustainable, profitable, and most of all, fulfilling real estate business. Could not be more excited today to have my friend back, Brett Sikora, to drop some massive value. Hey, keep in mind also that these episodes are always recorded and transcribed and put at theagentfactory.com. Brett, you ready to rock, man? Let's do it. Let's do it, brother. Um, you know, you are, I, I think you're either the, the first or second person I've had on for the second time. And I was actually looking at uh, Dan Beer's post um, and I felt like I had to get you back on, man, because your production's almost doubled from 2018 to 2019. And I know a lot of people out there um, want to hear how you did that. So um, when I saw that post, I mean, I, I rolled back on it and I was like, I had to take a second look. You went from 45 to 85 million in one year. And so I want to unpack that a little bit. But for those who don't know you, maybe didn't see you on the first show, tell us a little bit about yourself again. Yeah. So um, I'm Brett Sakura. I run the Sakura Group. I came over to EXP Realty about a year ago, a little over a year ago. Um, and we've just been kind of hammering down. I was with Keller Williams prior to that, learned a ton uh, there. And then before that, I was with mom and pop. So we're based out of Hoboken, New Jersey, which is right outside of New York City. And we basically hug a 90 minute radius of New York City and kind of service all those areas in northern Jersey, parts of the shore, uh, et cetera. Nice, man. So you are, are you um, are the real estate prices as crazy there as they are in New York? You know, we're we're a we're a smidge behind um, with what, you know, what's happening in Manhattan, but you know, we're, yeah, there, there's, I mean, I'm showing a place today that we're uh, putting an offer over a thousand square foot on it. So um, it depends on where you are in town, but you could, you could easily pay, you know, one and a half or 1.6 million for a two bedroom uh, condo here. Nice man. So t yeah. talk to me, like, how did you, um, how did you get started into real estate? Like what, t tell me that, like, what was your, what was kind of like the, 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 what the, the, I guess the, what was, what was the driver, man? Because like, you know, all the, I, and I talked about this on a couple of shows too. It's like you go to college, no one ever goes to college to become a real estate agent. You know what I mean? No, no one ever grows up telling their mom and dad, Hey, one day I'm going to be a real estate agent. You know what I mean? So like, yep. how, how did you, with the exception of people who probably grew up with realtor parents, but how did you get pushed into real estate? Well, fortunately, I didn't go to college and I graduated with a god awful GPA. So that's uh, I, I jumped over that. I started with a landscaping company out of high school uh, and just to kind of jump through it pretty quickly, sold that in 2007, June of 07, yeah. got my real estate license only to become an investor because in 07, I think we all remember that was like everybody was flipping. Everybody was making a ton of money from 2002, 05, 06, that sort of thing. Uh, and I actually ended up getting licensed at, at, at a, a horrible time uh, because I think we you know, all remember what started happening in 07, 08, the Dow dropped. I know people are shuddering about the coronavirus right now, but um, what happened in October of 08 was a hell of a lot more frightening what's happening this week. So, um, yeah, I got into it to, to invest and, 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 you know, thank God I didn't buy anything at the time. You yeah. know, that was that was. That was, I still ended up blowing through my savings, figuring out this whole realtor thing. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> I lost the money either way, I should say. Maybe I should have just invested it. Yeah, no. Are, so like, are you like, are you, are you investing now? I am. Yeah. I own a decent amount of properties. Um, yeah. Constantly. I, I think I'm up to 17 properties right now and, and 70 something doors and playing around with all sorts of stuff, flips, new construction you name it. There's, I don't think there's a, an avenue of real estate that I haven't been involved in, failed in, figured out. You know how, what works, what doesn't work. That's what we do, though, right? Yeah, it's like yeah, just dive in, figure it out later. So, how long have you been licensed now? Since June of 2007. 2007. Okay. All right. So you've been at it for a little while, man. And like, what? So you got in it, obviously, like we all do, as a solopreneur. Like you were, you were grinding on your own. When did it really start to take off for you? So funny thing is, and I tell everybody this because I, there's a lot of new agents that are like, oh, no, you came in at that time. This is blah, blah, blah. It's different now. I'm like, no, guys, I actually failed when I came into this business the first time. So June of 07, I failed. I made no money. I did one rental for one year. I was 21 years old. And I had uh, Ed, Ed Escobar was teaching me FISBO scripts and everything like that. It just wasn't clicking. It wasn't jiving. And I was in the wrong market. Um, 
so because of that, I ended up going into car sales. July 4th of 2008 was my first day in, in, in auto sales for Nissan. I did quite well. I did internet sales, which I was a young guy at the time. So I understood it where the older dogs didn't really know how to do, you know, that side of things. They didn't understand how computers, emails, whatnot worked. So um, I did that for three months. Things were going well, although I didn't like it. I didn't like selling cars. Um, it paid the bills and, and uh, October of 08 rolled around and everybody stopped buying cars, stopped buying everything and things got uh, pretty scary. So because of that, I ended up seeing an ad on Craigslist saying, hey, come into real estate, do rentals in Hoboken and make a hundred grand your first, first year. Yeah. I'm like, sweet. I started October 31st, 2008 and the rest is kind of history. And you met Dave right, right after that, right? Yeah. So David actually started at that company because he, the mortgage business killed him too. So he had a whole, I don't know what I'm going to do. Uh, and, and the same office that he and I met at, um, that was where he was going in trying to get their business, trying to become the lender within that office. And then they said, why don't you just get your real estate? Like say the exact same conversation with him. Like, Hey, you can make a lot of money doing rentals. Um, he and I kind of, you know, jointly cracked the code on, on rentals and we were doing, you know, 20, 30 rentals a month, which in New Jersey, they pay you one month broker fee on them. So, you know, we were making good money, but we were grinding, you know, rough 12 hour days, seven days a week kind of thing. Um, and it was very transactional. So um, I think Dave did the first sale for 600K or something and was like, hey, man, there's, <laughs> there's a better way to make money. Yeah. And then we took a deep dive into Mike Ferry coaching from there. Yeah. What's your market like right now? So we are com comfortable, I would say. It's, it's, it kind of feels balanced out where, you know, the rates are kind of driving the buyer's activity still. Sellers are, you know, coming down a little on their price and playing around things and certain things go into bidding wars. But, you know, we just haven't had six offers on it, but still landed five grand under asking. So, yeah. you know, it's kind of like it just feels healthy. It feels good. You know, the buyers aren't as abused as they used to be. And you require a, uh, a skillful agent to actually get the home sold in this market, too, which make our, makes our life a little bit easier. What's your team size right now, man? What's it look like? So we have 17 agents, uh, eight or nine of them are, you know, the ones that are cranking and then we're actually training the other ones or, you know, getting rid of some people that aren't, or had gotten rid of some people that aren't working. The, the, the crew that I have right now is, is pretty badass. So we're just getting them up and running as we're, uh, planning, uh, you know, 2020, 2021, 22, that sort of thing. And, and, and going growth wise. So you know, there's a there's a couple of different things I mean to unpack there. Obviously, when you t when you have that kind of growth, when you go from 45 to 85, it's it's uh it's 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 you're not doing it on your own anymore. You know what I mean? And so recruiting obviously becomes um, critical because you want to make sure that if you're willing to invest the time and the people that you're bringing into your world that you know they're actually going to that, that I mean morally and ethically that they they kind of see the vision that you have and so. How are you going about making sure that uh, you're bringing the right people into your world? Well, the, the fun thing is our world, for the most part, and sometimes it doesn't happen, but for the most part, only attracts the right people. Yeah. So if you're not culturally aligned with a Dan Spitz who you know or something like that, and you're not going to grind on that level, mm -hmm. you're going to feel really uncomfortable and you'll probably fire yourself before you can even get started. Yeah. Um, so there's agents that we interview with that, they understand what what we expect of them, you know, as far as plugging their numbers in, number of contacts per day, yeah. um, you know, practicing their skills, hopping on our coaching calls, really plugging in. And if, if they don't want to do that, the, com the conversation doesn't even continue beyond that. So that that's a nice thing. Whereas, you know, you take a Dan Spitz or Eric Goldfarb, Andrew, any of my top guys, Eric Eckhart, and you tell them, hey, that's what's required. They're like, shit, can I, can I double that? Can I do twice what you want me to do? Like what would happen then? Like that's the mindset that we look for in our team. Love that, dude. I yeah. Love so much. And where do you find these guys, bro? <laughs> I think again, we just attract them. I don't have a recruiting, um, you know, model really dialed in. And that's something that I'm working with my coach on. Um, it, it really is. It's just kind of like the EXP model. You know, you, you make noise, you do the right things and people are watching you. You, you hop on videos like this and, 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 you know, add value to people's lives. And then they, they kind of raise their hand and they're like, Hey, do you, do you mind if we sit down? I'm not really happy 
with where my life's at or where my business is at, that sort of thing. My head's kind of messed up and we can work on a lot of different things. Um, I do have agents though, too, that we've got through LinkedIn and, and we're a little noisy on LinkedIn messaging, that sort of thing too. So um, that, that's nice through Sales Navigator. You can kind of select you know, real estate agents that aren't with EXP and start shooting them messages. Yeah, yeah. And so um, are you finding you're having better luck with people that you're bringing in from outside the industry or within the industry or both? So I have a very um, young new agent team, but I also have some other agents that, and when I say like young, I mean, they've been in the business for, you know, less than two years or less than three years, four years, and they're cranking. But I also have experienced agents on my team. Um, Doris Diaz is an excellent agent and she is, uh, you know, a, a super valuable to, to our business. Um, Linda Kwok is another agent that just joined us, had, you know, very successful on her own and and decided to uh, to come to our umbrella so she can really take it to the next level. So yeah, it's, it. it's a combination. So those 17, are those, uh, is that admin and agent then? No, that's strictly agent. We have, uh, I have uh, Christina Trichetti or Christina Danucci. She just got married in October. Um, she's our operations manager. She was an assistant MCA at Keller Williams locally in our market. Um, in, insanely good at what she does. Um, Darren is one of our transaction or is our transaction coordinator. She handles all the files and, and is an absolute badass in that aspect too. Um, and then we have Megan on, on the marketing side of things too. So that's our three staff. It's, it's operations, uh, transaction coordinator, you know, listing coordinator, and then, uh, marketing. How is your day different now than it was three years ago? <laughs> uh, well, now my day is 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 a tornado that hits me about seven thirty in the morning, and uh, and it usually ends around six six thirty. The nice thing is I'm not as heavy on the client side of things anymore, so it does die down at a decent hour, and we have systems in place where um, things things don't get to me as heavily. But my typical day, it, it's a lot of meetings. It's a lot of um, it's a lot of meetings. It's a lot of you know, I'll talk on panels. I'll do, it's, it's a lot of noise, a lot of shaking trees. Let's just say that it's more of a mass scale of, of, you know, get, getting out there and putting my name out there or putting the group's name out there and just kind of making noise, kicking in doors and a little less of, um, you know, mojo dialing like we used to do. Yeah. Yeah. And so like you talked about earlier, you, you when you bring somebody in, you, you, you're very transparent about what your expectations are. Would you mind sharing? sharing those with us? Like, what are your expectations? Sure. So when we were coaching with Matthew Ferry, who is strictly on mindset side of things, he, he had his whole lower the bar um, sort of thing. So, so in regards to our expectations, we require the agents to sell two homes a month, 24 a year um, at our average price point of, you know, five ninety or so that lands right around 13 million in, in sales. And then we use CTE to track their numbers. They have to input their numbers daily and we only require 10 contacts per day. So it's not crazy. It's, so, it's actually insanely simple if you don't have to do anything else but sell homes. Um, and we find that when the agent hits their 10, they usually just go past that. If they're having a good day, that way, like if, if it's a painful day, and you know those days where people are yelling at you, it's just not a good, you're not feeling great. Maybe you have a little bit of a hangover or something like that. You hit your 10, you did your job, go chill out, that sort of thing. But if you're rolling and... and you know, the, uh, the realtor gods are on your side that day, take it to 30, you know, keep going beyond that. So, um, we, we set low minimum standards in that aspect and, and consistency is something that we focus on more than having those, you know, bold 100 days where, and then no prospecting for three weeks after that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So are, are your, your expectations are predicated around, um, around the dials, right? I mean, it's, it, that's your focus is that that's, that's, that's what you're driving is, is, well, actually it's a number of contacts. It's, it's predicated on 10. Con yeah. yeah. It's, it, it, it's, it's contacts. And actually, uh, again, I'm, I come from a Mike Ferry background, but if you take, you know, Doris Diaz on our team, she's a badass at open houses. So guess what? That's where your contacts are coming from, but you're going to do eight open houses a month. And that's something that she's deciding on her own, you know, how to get there. Um, but we realize in this business, there's so many different personality types and there's so many different, you know, things that make people tick in their business that we just focus, we want to make you uncomfortable, Yeah. but we also want to focus on your strengths. Right. So 
You take a Dan Spitz, he can dial all day long, every single day. Eric Eckhart, same thing. Um, but you take an Eric Goldfarb on our team, and he's he's just a badass at working through the investor um, network. So, you know, networking events, that sort of thing. Andrew Cassie's a badass at internet buyer leads, and yeah. that's his thing, and he and is hitting the contacts on that. So a bunch of different ways to, to, to skin the cat, but the whole, um, you know, core of everything is, is daily action. Have you ever brought people in Brett that just wouldn't, they, 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 they wouldn't do the activity. Yep. Yep. And or, if- or they just take so long to, to, you know, get ready. And again, they'll have those days where they will do it and the results are incredible. And then they stop and, um, you know, there's more, there's more going on there. There's more in the mindset side of things. There's, there's, you know, maybe the why is not figured out or maybe they're, maybe they're not sleeping well or whatever it may be. They're not, they're not showing up. And, and like I said, I mean, that, that, that just fires itself, you know, that, that in, in our world with us prospecting and throwing footballs around the office and having a good time with to like today's Billy Joel, Rod Stewart and Phil Collins just blasting all day in the office. And, and, and you know, it, it's tough to sit there at a desk. We, again, I'm in a closet right now, like closed off from them, but we left it as an open, like trading floor. We're a full blown, um, you know, wide open, all the desks on the perimeter sort of thing. And the energy is there. It's bumping. So if you're not doing anything, you're going to feel like a slime ball in our atmosphere. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and like typically when somebody comes into your environment, that's not like they're, they're not in alignment with your values, with your vision, like. Do, do, are you seeing that they're weeding themselves out? Do they stay a long time, or do you do you just let them? Do you have a conversation with them and just kind of let them go? How does that How does that work? Yeah, I mean, I look, I I am I am all. I, nobody's going to start a team unless they want to help people. Nobody's going to, you know, do what Jay Kinder did and have a massive downline unless they want to help people. You know, you can't you can't be trading that off without uh, you know going with leading with that. You're not going to put that much time into people or the time that it requires yeah. to do that. I would just be a solo agent with with three admin. Um, so that said, I want to see everybody succeed. I'm not the type that's going to be like, Hey, uh, get out of our world. This isn't working. It's like, how do we get this to work? Then the next week, how do we get this to work? How do we get this to work? How do, why aren't you doing this? What's let's dig deeper. Let's, let's do a one-on-one. Did you meet with, you know, our team leader to take a deep dive, tell our coach, Hey, you got to go, you know, figure out, shake the trees a little bit and try to figure out what's going on with so-and-so. Um, and then if, if, if all of that happens and there's still no result at that point, you know, it's, Hey, I love you. You know, you're still in my family at EXP. Um, culturally, you're not fitting into what we're, we're looking to do here. But that said, you know, that's a nice thing about EXP. It's like, I still want you to succeed like all hell and I'll help you to recruit agents and everything like that. Yeah. Um, I just can't actually be paying monthly to, <laughs> to invest in you. Right. Right. So like when you, um, I know some some newer agents watch this show or listen to it, and um, you know they probably see an eighty five million. They're like, "Whoa, that's like way over my head." But like, so a newer agent maybe who's not you know maybe not to that level of production yet. Like, how would you recommend that they set up their day each day, Brett? So my schedule when I was a solo agent schedules everything, Um, and we were actually just talking about. I can't think of the author. Um, but I sat on a panel on Wednesday and the book is deep work. So read the book, deep work. It's all about getting it, it, time blocking, all of that stuff. So whoever's listening, um, deep work is a great, great book for that. And Matthew and Kristen, uh, Ferry introduced me to that, <clears throat> but schedules, everything and schedule starts the night before and whether or not people, you know, really want to admit it. Like even last night I went out to, I was at two different lender events with drinks and everything like that. And I'm walking around drinking ginger beer, so it looks like I'm having drinks. I'm being socially, you know, and I cut loose at 9 o'clock, went home, and I was able to get up at 6.30 this morning with zero hangover because I had no alcohol but still fit in with everybody. So my day is able to launch very hard, and it always was as a single agent too because it's happening the night before. You can't come in with a hangover. You can't. Be, you have to be well-rested, you know, turn off the cell phone at 8 o'clock at night, that sort of thing. Um, but as a single agent, if you're at that, like, you know, two and a half to 15 million kind of range. Really, like you should be doing four hours of prospecting, you know, every single day, automatic, like like eight to 12, you know. Um, 
start with your expireds as we've talked about, you know, there's the first ones you want to get on. Yeah. And I know you, you, you even call earlier than that 750. I, I was never a before eight kind of guy personally, <laughs> but, uh, but I know a lot of people have had a ton of success with that. Um, and then from there, go into your just listed, just solds, uh, you know, Fizbo's we call early. Um, and then I start getting into databases. We get around that 11 o'clock, you know, 1030, 11, 1130. And, you know, we were talking about this earlier this morning or late last night where there was an agent, you know, who's selling about five homes a year. And, and we're talking about brand and, you know, why even want to come to EXP, that sort of thing. And it's like, there's so many things, there's 850 things I can think of to help somebody who's only selling five homes a year, sell 10 homes a year, literally double their income. Right. It's so simple at that level to, to, to make drastic changes year over year, in my opinion, yeah. you know? Um, but yeah, that, that's, I mean, you got to start, start off doing, you know, your one thing, which is talking to people every single morning. And, and also, you know, again, it, it may not have, it, maybe it held me back in some ways, but it also created a lot of success. I did a lot of everything. Um, I was, I was the listing agent that was still doing open houses on Saturdays and Sundays. And I was, you know, showing buyers and, you know, I had a 50, 50 kind of spread between buyers and sellers. Yeah. Like I was grinding, you know, that, that like, it's not an easy job, but it's really not that complicated. Yeah. You know, do you it, require it, your agents to come into the office? Uh, we do not as long as they're doing their activities, but the, but, but we, and again, we can track it through CT. We kind of know what they're doing. You can see it through their deals too, if they're, they're doing it or not. Um, but we definitely, we strongly encourage it. Yeah. Um, it, it, it's easier to be in that setting and, and have success. Yeah. You know, we're a licensed branch office out of, out of Hoboken, New Jersey. I, I, I so like, I'm, I'm really getting on board with, um, having agents in the office, I just think it makes a really, I, you talked about energy, right? And you're how you're blasting music, but everybody, everybody kind of feeds on that when they're in that atmosphere of production. Um, it's, it's yep. not that people can't do it at home. I think you just have to be a little more disciplined to, to be able to get stuff done at home because there's so many distractions, but I'm really becoming a firm believer of agents coming into the office. In fact, we just moved into a new 6,000 square foot office space. And, um, and so like we're, when agents come in here, I just feel like, you know, it's easy to hand off a deal, right? It's, it's easy for somebody to come in and ask a question, right? It's just easy. Like that, I don't know, that, that back and forth is just a little bit easier. And I feel, I don't know. I just, I think it, I think it like, I think it galvanizes your, your group. I mean, when you have everybody together, you know what I mean? Versus, you know, everybody just kind of scattered around. Now we don't require agents be in the office either. I'm just saying, I think that if they if they're here more often than not, in other words, if they're not on an appointment and it's between like the hours of eight and five or nine and five or whatever, yep. that they should be in here because they can feed off the energy from our group. Yeah. And don't get me wrong. I would love it if that wasn't the case, too, because it, it, it's not cheap for office space in Hoboken, New Jersey either. So, um, yeah, I I, I really, uh, you know, I, I play around the idea of you know, Google Hangouts, that sort of thing, if we could prospect all from that. But I really don't think that anything um, anything beats at least the team aspect of, of being able to throw that football around and kind of have that, like you said, that, you know, go grab an admin, that sort of thing. If you have a question about something or, or talk to a coach or talk to a team leader, um, you know, I, I, and I really, I would say if you audited somebody's business as, as an agent, working out of home versus somebody's business, you know, working out of, even if it's just a regular office where a lot of fun stuff isn't happening, I think you're always going to be more productive in an office space. I went through gaps as a single agent where, um, you know, I didn't have enough money to pay 200 bucks a month for a desk at KW or something. I mean, just give an example, but like that, and I worked for my dining room table until, you know, it kind of got there and I know I wasn't as productive or, or it didn't come as naturally. You know, I kind of had to push through that to make sure that I actually was, you know, still waking up, throwing, throwing a button down and suit on or whatever and working from home, feeling like I'm ready for an appointment. Yeah. Is there anything more important than lead generation? No. I, well, I don't know. These Michael, Michael Reese and those guys seem to, <laughs> I'm trying to figure out like that magic pill. Yeah. I haven't found it yet, but, and I know they're, they're playing around with the automation side of things and the AI and, and all that. 
Um, and I welcome anybody to show me new stuff, but I, I haven't found, and even with, you know, inbound buyer leads, uh, whatever it may be, if you open house leads, even come list me, they don't, they don't work without heavy follow-up. It just never, does. there's always that human interaction where, you know, if I ever, if I ever think something's a layup, then I usually don't get the listing. And, 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 and I, if I'm not playing, you know, at a thousand percent, you know, then they're going to list with their neighbor probably. Yeah. I, I love so, the whole idea of lead generation and predictable revenue, right? I think that that's, that's the difference between, you know, kind of taking what's given to you and, and creating a predictable re revenue stream. And like, if you don't lead gen and, and like, I always like cringe when I hear these realtors that say it's by referral only. Or, or yeah. By referral only. yeah. It's like, Oh man. Yeah. You probably don't make very much money. You know what I mean? Cause you're, you're essentially just sitting by, you know, you're waiting for your phone to ring, right? That's what you do if you're by referral only. Yeah. And it's fun. And that brings me back to, we were, we were, uh, I, again, the panel is sitting on Wednesday. Somebody was asking in regards to, you know, how do you, how do you do the database side of things or how, like my phone just rings and I get business and blah, blah, blah. Two weeks ago, three weeks ago, and you've been on our mastermind too. We had Michael Mayer who co-wrote Miracle Morning for Real Estate Agents with, uh, with Michael Reese, Jay Kinder and um, Seven Levels of Communication, I believe was the other one that he wrote. Um, and he was on our mastermind and he was talking, he, that exact concept. It was, um, Hey, my phone rings that that's how I do business. And so many realtors think of it that way. But if you saw, and I can share this with you, what Michael Mayer had like outlined what your 52 week plan was yeah. to make your phone ring. It, it made, it made me nervous. Like I was like, Holy crap, I can't do that. You know, like it, it was next level you know, eight events a year, calling people, inviting them to the events, like just, just awesomeness at, at the highest level. And you're still prospecting, yeah. you know, you're still, you're in your database beyond belief. If you follow that, that program to make your phone ring. Yeah. Yeah. That's interesting, man. Because I, I even tell people that are good, really good networkers, right? I, I, I'm, I have a partner named John Puelski. He's a really good networker. The guy just, he knows how to work a room. He shows up at these events and, you know, he always leaves with like a referral. And, and you know, part of me is always, um, I, I've always envied that, but um, yeah. at the same time, that's just never been me as a person. And I can go in and work a room, but it was so crazy for me, dude, because I would, I'd rather call people I don't know and ask for business than ask people that already know, like, and trust me for business. And I'm just, I guess I'm just weird like that, man. But that's always been me. And, um, yeah. and so I never, I, ne I never mind, you know, picking up the phone and calling strangers and asking for business. Yeah, no, I, I totally, I, I kind of feel the same way as you too. You know, I have a, I have a very good database and I'm, and I'm grateful for everything that they've, you know, done for me in this business, but I always like the new leads too. Yeah. You know, I like finding new ones. I so, like that into it. So you're for a new agent or, or I don't, I don't want to say new agent because there's a lot of agents that are cranking out, you know, um, you know, five or 10 or 15 deals or, or anywhere between that, you know, two and $15 million point. But so your recommendation, start out your day, um, uh, probably at least, at least probably three hours, but more like four hours a lead gen from eight to 11 or eight to 12. Right. Yeah. I mean, and actually you said this on our mastermind and it always stuck with me. It's like, <laughs> you, you should be prospecting, showing properties, writing contracts. That's a, that, right. that's it. If you're not doing that, what are you doing? Right. You know, no. you're either do so. So, yeah, I mean, I even think four hours is is light, you know, it, it's if you're not doing, you know, 30, 40 deals a year, at, at least I feel like you, you have so much free time in the day. Yeah. You know, you really do. And, and, and to be on Facebook or or doing any of that stuff, put the phone away, you know, leave the phone outside of the office, call from an office line and, and, and get after it. Use I mean, even if you're going to prospect through email, too. You know, put an inbox pause on there, which you can add on to Gmail. So nothing comes in. You can still be firing out a million outbound emails to your database, past clients, following up with people, shoot out bomb bomb videos, that sort of thing. And then when 11 o'clock hits, everything comes in for the day. And then you go, you know, follow up with your emails. Yeah. So what do you attribute? I mean, what do you attribute adding 40 million in production over 12 months? Like, what, so, what do you think that what, what do you think drove that? Um, you know, again, I, I, I always it's action. It's, it's, if you, if you, if you follow me or if you follow my agents around, 
we're, we're chopping wood daily. It's every single day you're chopping, you're chopping, you're chopping, you're chopping. And I feel like, you know, Tony Robbins, I, I think uses the analogy of, of, you know, if you hit a, if you hit a driver in, in golf and you're just like one degree off, it lands, you know, 30 yards to the right. But if you're, you hit it straight on, you're, you're right on that way. So it's like those little shifts daily yeah. can totally change where you're going this way or that way. Um, and, and in my opinion, I mean, I'm a little pissed off that, that we didn't double our business because I, I set a higher goal. I, I won 139 million last year and I'm always going to set a high goal and go after it. But I think that I operated at like a level two of what I'm capable at. And I'm pretty hard on myself. Um, because of a ton of distraction through exp i had to get my broker's license last year that sort of thing um sitting 150 hours of real estate school while all trying to grow this business and switch companies and uh the whole nine so it for me it's very exciting to not have any distractions this year and we're just hammering away so i think we're gonna have you know significantly more growth in 2020 than we did in 2019 but yeah it's daily action man it's the same concept it's it's it, we know what we need to do. I know I need to be attracting agents. I know that the agents need to be producing. I know that the systems have to be dialed in. So we have weekly staff meetings. We have weekly um, sales meetings as well. We have weekly coaching meetings too. Like everything is very regimented in that aspect. Um, and we're constantly paying attention to, you know, as, as the owner, you have to pay attention to the income producing activities, but you also have to make sure that the income uh, servicing activities are being handled on the backside of things so that the agents stay happy. Yeah. You, um, Matt, like, are, are you still in production? Are you still going on listings? I am. Yeah. So I personally make up uh, in 2019, I made up 16 million of that myself. And how long, um, how long do you want to continue to do that? Are you one of those people that you'll, you'll always be in production? No, I mean, the goal is not the goal is the, for me, the goal is not to be in production um, anymore. I, I actually constantly battle with, and th this is something I talk with the team about kind of taking over my database is, I know it's costing me money to be in production at this point. Yeah. Um, that said, I, I, I kind of, I still struggle with that. That's one of my, I work with my coach on that and we kind of phase things out, but I, I, I do, you know, I still enjoy selling homes. That's what <laughs> I like. I like working with friends and having a, you know, selling a home for a million bucks and then having a beer with them afterwards. It's fun yeah. for me. So I, I, I don't, I think that people leave production because they're burnt out and, and, and I think if your systems are set up, you know, I, I did 16 million myself last year with, without that, without prospect and with just kind of going through the motions and, and trying to keep my head above water as, you know, there, there was literally a hurricane happening around me as we're growing this, this whole thing. Um, and, and, you know, I, 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 I still, I do enjoy it. I, I enjoy working with people. I, I enjoy working with cool clients and I'm fortunate enough where all my clients are cool. Yeah. And, and you know what? I think like it's not like it's our realtor community that drives that. Uh, oh yeah, you gotta. If you, the ultimate level of success is when you step away and you're not, you know, you're just managing a team. And you know, I mean, the whole red book was predicated on, you know, the seventh level and all that stuff. So you know, you know, you never want to live someone else's dream. If that's not what you want to do, then and you're perfectly happy selling real estate, then you should always continue to sell real estate. I, I don't think you should. That's not the pinnacle. Success is defined differently for everybody. And, and so yeah. in that book, it is, I guess, at the highest level you can go. Um, it's not necessarily where everybody needs to go in order to deem themselves as a successful you know, business owner or real estate agent or whatever, whatever you call yourself at that level. Exactly. Yeah. I don't see, I don't, I don't ever see a world with me selling 80 homes personally in my future. Uh, that said, I don't mind selling 25, 30 you know, just kind of, again, it, it, it doesn't feel like I'm selling. So it's, it's not a chore. We're, we're having fun with my, my clients are awesome. So I, I definitely don't, uh, don't mind that at all. I, I think I've learned, man, over the, especially over like the last probably 15 months that um, I so enjoy like working with agents who um, are, are, who want to learn, who want to grow, man. I love being around people like that. Um, that to me is more fun than, you know, being in front of a seller or, or a buyer for that matter. Yeah. And I, I, I never figured that out. Like, I mean, the, we all start in the industry the same way, right? We all start in front of buyers and sellers and then, you know, everybody can go a myriad of different you know directions in this industry. Um, and it's, 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 it's been so much more fulfilling, especially since we've joined EXP and partnering with some of the people that we have 
to really bring agents into our environment, um, you know, not only locally here, but nationally and, and be able to make such a big impact on their business. And not, we, not everybody, you know, not everybody, not everybody wants, not everybody has that ambition or that drive to, to be successful. And that's okay, man. I, the mistake I made at first was I would look. Oh, the lens. No, I'm here. Can you hear me? There you are. Can you hear me? Yeah. Hang on. I'm, I had a, uh... Yeah, we're you know, good now. We're good. But what I was saying is that I would, I, I would, the mistake I made early on was like looking through my own lens and like I would bring people in into our environment and say, you know, um, this is what you need to do. This is what you need to do. And and I had a I had a a, a paradigm shift probably like two years ago. And I I thought, well, I'm going to bring agents in. I'm going to I'm going to ask them what their goals are, and then if their goals are um, if their goals are, I don't want to say worthy because I think that's the wrong word, but I, I, I think if their goals are, if I'm okay with their goals, in other words, I think that, you know, if somebody wants to come in and sell two homes a month, right? They want to make 150 grand or whatever that looks like. I'm okay with that, right? But if somebody's, in other words, if somebody's ambition or, 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 or um, if their goals are too low, then I have the ability at that point to say, hey, we're not partnering with you, right? But right. If, if I'm letting you on the team, then I'm saying I'm okay with whatever your goals are. And now I'm asking for permission to help them hold them accountable to hit their own goals, not my goals for them, but their own goals. Yep. And that's been, that's been just so much better for me since I had that paradigm shift because now we can truly bring people in. We have a system. We actually have a system built out that if they follow that system, it works every time, man. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. And that makes it a lot of fun. You know, you're really, you're, it's fun to, to, it's fun to see success in other, in other people, you know, that actually like work for it and go after it. Like that, that, that's very rewarding. I see, I think more so, man, that I, I, like I bang my head against the wall, Brett, about bringing people in who just, who don't, who don't take action, man. It's like, you know, they sit down with you in the interview and they're like, yeah, man, I'm, I'm getting ready to just destroy it. Right. I'll be in here every day. <laughs> And they, you know, they, 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 three days later, they're just they disappear, man. You know what I mean? And you, 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 they don't come to trainings anymore. Their, you know, their dials yeah. aren't there. It's just crazy, dude. And I'm like, well, what happened to that person I saw at the interview? What happened to that person, man? You know what I mean? Where, where did he or she go? Yep, yep. No, I love the one like too. We'll, we'll be like, you know, somebody will come in, they're all fired up, and I'm like, great. Now take your cell phone out of your pocket and start calling every single person. And start, start a day. And just keep going down and start mentioning that you're a real estate agent. How you know, and start going into the whole thing. And it's so funny how many agents are just like, uh, 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 and they just full like they like they almost fire themselves there. Yeah. Um. But the ones that um, you know, like as I'm interviewing new agents that aren't on my team, and I'm like, how did you you know succeed? They're like, I called every single person I know and told them I'm a real estate agent. And I'm like, oh, yeah, go figure. You know, it's an important piece of uh, information for your for your friends and family to know. Um, but yeah, no, it's, it, it, it's, it's crazy. I don't know what some people do, man. I don't know. How but, do you uh, your time these days, dude, with like, because not only are you a business owner now, um, you're in production, but you also have this group of, of guys and gals that's, you know, they've committed to you. Like, how do you, how do you have time for all that? Like what, I, I, like for me, I, I'm fortunate enough now and, and, um, that most of my time can be spent with, just working with agents in, in their production. Yep. I do remember being where you're at and how difficult it is. And I'm not even sure how I got through that, but like everybody's different. Right. I, and I, by the way, I think Dan Spitz was on the show, dude. He is, he's a freaking, he's a monster, dude. I think yeah. he's, he's doing like 600 dials a day, isn't he? Like, yeah, as a minimum. So how do you, how do you, how do you time block your day so that you spend the appropriate amount of time with them the appropriate amount of time on lead generation, the appropriate amount of time with clients, the appropriate amount of time with staff. How do you do that, man? And then so, recruit. Then you got to recruit for your right? Dude, how do you do all that? So the so the staff the staff meetings are in place. So that's when we'll we're going to take a deep dive into you know. So there's 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 three meetings a week, um, and they're usually a half hour to an hour long. So that's when that whole thing's going down. Um, so, so that's fairly simple, and I'm fortunate enough where. Uh, my, my staff is, you know, operates at such a high level that they know they come to the meeting with the issues. You know, they, every, everybody puts it off until that, 
Um, the agents well as well, when we're doing one-on-one coaching or, or, you know, our monthly meetings or our weekly meetings, they're putting a lot of this stuff off until that. Um, and, and obviously a lot of the meetings are going to be outside of the office. So if I'm meeting with clients or that sort of thing, um, uh, you know, I'm out, out and about meeting with, we meet with agents that may join our team, that sort of thing. Um, and then lead gen, if I can't get it done in the morning, it doesn't happen, you know? So, so it doesn't happen every day. Um, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say I have a perfect, uh, record with that, but when I, when I do it, it's, it, it's pretty darn good, you know, yield some pretty good results. So, um, yeah, there is, there's a schedule that I try to try to stick to. I try to keep my mornings as open as possible. Uh, in, in the, within the team, everybody's kind of dialing at that same time. Everybody's kind of grinding. The staff is catching up on everything that came in from the night before. So there's, that's not a time where there's usually questions that are coming up from the group, you know, that that's action time. And I think everybody's kind of hammering away. Um, this time of day is where, you know, things start to, if I'm in the office, things start to slow back if they, or, you know, I might be leaned back in my chair, you know, texting or on Instagram, catching up on social media or putting a stupid post up, um, you know, making a step brothers video like we did yesterday. I don't know if you saw that with my buddy Rosado, uh, and, and red bonk, but, um, you know, that that's, I, I'm a, I'm a firm believer that if, if your morning happens the way it's supposed to happen, the rest of the day doesn't really matter as much. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah that's a good point, man. I think you're, you're right. The, 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 typically what happens is if you can control your morning, um, then the rest of your day just kind of falls in place because typically what you do in the morning, I, I find that's why, I, I mean, when I get up, I get up about five in the morning, right. And, and like no one else is up in the house and it's completely quiet. And, you know, that's the time you can meditate. That's the time you can, um, you know, you, you can kind of write your goals down. You can, I mean, you just get centered. If you have a great morning, you get a workout in, you get the blood flowing, right. You eat a great breakfast, man. And then do you just dialed in? Like you said, um, I, I, do you, one thing you did say, like, are you coaching one-on-one with your agents? Like, do you require that or do you have, do they come to you if they need that or how does that work? So how, it, so obviously I'm always available for questions or anything. Um, we do our best to make sure that the agents are directing the question to the appropriate person uh, to get the answer, the best answer. Uh, and we also, you know, have conversations with them that where they understand that there, there are certain questions that I really shouldn't be answering uh, and it's taking away from my day to, to so it's and I'm sure you've seen this too in your business where it's a knee jerk reaction for an agent just to go to some, you know if I'm sitting next to him uh, even if I'm hammering away to just say hey hey Brett you know what's what's going on with these postcards I'm like I don't know why are you why are you asking me that that, that ask Megan from marketing she ordered them I'm not going to ask Megan for you um, so you know I'm I'm really good at 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 not knowing you know a lot of things that are going on but. Uh, uh, I'm trying to think of how I'm going full circle with this. Um, kind of lost my train of thought, but at any rate, no, I, I, oh yeah, the one-on-one coaching. So anybody who's less than 10 million a year in production, they work with Eric Goldfarb. He's our team leader. So he does the one-on-ones with them. Um, I still sit in with some of the agents that were working with me before Eric kind of took over that role. So I'm always like kind of around listening in that sort of thing. Um, but Eric, Eric is a wealth of knowledge and, and can really solve a lot of problems for agents. Um, and then actually what's a lot of fun, and this is kind of the EXP thing, uh, Dave DeVoe is our, our, our in-team consultant uh, that works for the agents 10 million and above because I had been you know, working with them for, for years and years. And, um, you know, it's just, it's nice. It's nice to have another coach. It's nice to have somebody else come in and kind of, um, you know, help push them in a different direction or, or remind them to do things or say it a little bit differently or open up, you know, new things. And then we also have uh, biweekly coaching with Coach Kelly um, and she's an ex-MAPS coach and, and does an excellent job with the team that's in a group setting too. So there's a lot of touches that are happening to the team to make sure that they're held accountable um, and also that they have the proper training to, you know, have the sales skills to convert at a high level once they're taking the action. Yeah. Do you find that um, that agents don't value coaching as much if they're not paying for it? Mm, that's a good question. I never thought about that. I don't think so. They, we have really good attendance. Yeah. And, you know, I think so. We're a big prospecting team. Um, we're not the type that just hands out leads if you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing. Yeah. So I think that the agents find a lot of value in that 
guidance in that coaching. I think that that's part of our, 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 you know, value proposition to the team. It's a big part of it is, is the coaching side of things. So, so kind of to go back to the very beginning of the call, we attract people that want to be coached. Right. Yeah. And I see people that spend a thousand, 2000 bucks a month on coaching all the time. And don't do what they're supposed to be doing. Yeah. They like, they're just a part of the cult and they feel important. So they'll go fly out to San Diego and go to the retreats and then come back and do nothing with it. So yeah. I don't think, I don't think there's any correlation with paying for coaching versus not paying. Yeah. You know what's so cool about you, man, is it's just like when I met you, man, and, and all the guys like Dave and I mean, you know, now Dan and, and stuff is like, it's, it's so cool to meet people that are, are kind of cut from the same cloth. And like, I, like, I, I so like talking to people who are just grinders, man, who, who love to, you know, who, who love to hit the phones, man, and just talk to people and, and they'll do whatever it takes. And I, how do you think that like, you, you know, we, we all came from like, like, I'm not a college graduate either, dude. I like, I dropped out of college and like, um, you know, I, I just, I can just remember like at some point in my life just being like, dude, you know, I want it so bad. Like, how am I ever going to make it happen? And it's like, you know, finally got that opportunity. And, you know, I mean, I'm sure you had days like that when you were in car sales, just thinking, dude, this is, I, I don't want to be like this forever. You know what I mean? But like, so you finally found your niche and I'm curious, how has that changed you as a person, Brett? Well, the funny thing is, and your your KW background too, right? Yeah, yep. So KPA was a thing that rolled out after the disc tests over there. And and I actually test insanely high, and I use this a lot with coaching, but I test really high as a transaction coordinator, as a, as, a, <laughs> as an assistant. Um, I literally am like the 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 complete opposite of everything that shows up in my own world. So I'm a firm when you when when you go back to the do whatever it takes, I'm a firm believer of I come from from the mindset of whatever the hell I want to do, I'm going to go do that and I'm going to get it done and I'm going to do it the best I can. I'm going to play full out. So even if that's saying, hey, guess what? I'm going to be a, an accountant for Price Waterhouse Cooper tomorrow and I'm not good with spreadsheets or numbers or anything like that. I'm still going to be one of their best damn accountants. You know, like I'm going to learn the shit out of Excel, even if I don't like it, because if that's what I've I've set out to do, that's that's you know, that's where, that's where we're going. Yeah. Are you guys still using Mojo? Yeah. Still your favorite tool? Uh, yeah. Mojo's great, man. But we're, we're, you know, we're paying attention to that voice over IP spam stuff right now too. Yeah. So we might start getting our, you know, I don't know if you've paid attention to that either, but we might start, you know, peck dialing our, our, uh, our cell phones and stuff and trying to get better answer rates. We've been texting a lot of people too, to try to get them, you know, to call back or hop or schedule a call with follow up, that sort of thing. Um, answer rates are dipping a little bit, but yeah, Mojo is great. Mojo, Mojo is awesome. We actually realigned with Zillow recently too. And I know people are like, ah, you can't do that. But um, I think that, I think that, that, you know, when people are running this way, I'm going that way. Yeah. yeah so I, I don't think there's yeah. anything wrong with it at all, man. You know, what, Everything works and nothing doesn't, right? <laughs> it's whatever you want to make work. Yeah, it's exactly right. Are you yep. when you guys are on when you you and your guys are on Mojo? Like, are you guys um, are you using that the the, the, um, the neighborhood data function? Is that what you're doing? Yeah. So I actually so we actually use Cole Realty Resources, which is typically where we're going to pull um, all of our uh, you know data when we're calling through you know full towns. Like in regards to that, um, Data Finder is another one that we do. Uh, we use a thousand calls a day. I don't know if you're familiar with them. We're using them too. Yeah, so we use them, uh, and we'll just pull lists from them. We'll pull people that own free and free and clear in a whole county, and just have them hammer through it. Yeah. Um, and then I own the list too, so then my guys will go right behind the ISAs or VAs and and hammer through that same um, neighborhood finder. I actually, just, coincidentally, just canceled that today. Tara Plaza from our team was using it, and she said, "All right, I pulled a bunch of lists. You can you can get rid of it." So I'm like, "All right." <laughs> It's so, cheap. It's forty bucks a month or whatever. But. I, I just want to clarify what he's saying, guys. Is that um, he, the the so there's a neighborhood data function where you can actually outline. Um, and I guess in your in your in your case, um, you guys, there's a lot of buildings. In my case, it's just SFR single family residences that are you know stacked next to each other. But um, at the end of the day, it's all the same thing. Uh, you're just what you're doing is you're reaching out to consumers, seeing if they're interested in selling a property. And then either, you know, setting the appointment or nurturing the lead till it's ready to set an appointment. Um, but you, you, the other piece there is the data, right? So we're having some luck right now with um, a proprietary list that we paid for too. It's motivated seller data. So it's estate, probate, divorce. 
um, uh, city fines, uh, pre foreclosure. Um, and then there's some other stuff that's kind of mixed in there. And, and the, the whole reason we did that is because, you know, obviously we want to take more listings. Um, right now our market's still, um, it, it's still a seller's market and buyers are, you know, like, like you said, they're getting beat up, right. They're, they're in nope. or they're losing. Um, so we definitely want to own the listings, but like, I just want, I like, I don't think there's any magic formula. I think people watch these shows sometimes and they're like, Oh man, yeah, I'm going to get the magic, the magic formula. Right? He's going to tell me exactly what to do. And, and the reality of it is a lot of times you listen to these shows and if you distill them down there, they all come back to one point and, and that's, you know, that's contacting consumers, right? That it's what it all comes down to. I don't give a shit if you're networking or if you're calling people on the phones, it still comes down to a conversation at the end of the day. And he or she who has the most conversations about selling or buying real estate is going to sell the most real estate. That's just the yep. bottom line. And so the reason why we're using tools like Mojo and scrubbing data is we're giving, we're optimizing, we're giving ourselves the best opportunity to have really, um, um, really good conversations about, you know, either buying or selling a property. Would you agree? Totally. Yeah. yeah. I tell everybody it's, it's, you have to throw, you can throw up on 99 people and, and, and they tell you to go screw off. And then the hundredth one says, yes, you make $7,000. Yeah. Like where else can you do that? Right. You know, I'm going to go throw up on 999 then or 991 or whatever and, and, and make whatever 60 grand then. Yeah. But yeah, it's, it, it really, it, it's just a numbers game. And we use vehicles like Mojo, triple line dialers. They have, what's the other, there's a, there's, you know, that five or 10 line dialer. Yeah, five nine. There's there's a bunch of Tyler. there's vehicles to make you more efficient in doing things and and pulling lists like what Mike was just talking about too. But there's probably a better chance to to get a fish on the line uh, as opposed to just combing through a whole zip code of of every single number out there. Uh, we like free and clear people who own free and clear for more than five years. That's usually somebody who you know wouldn't mind having a conversation in regards to the value of their home. So there's ways to make that more efficient, but at the end of the day, you know, if you pick up a phone book, you could also just, I don't even think they have phone books anymore, but if they had a phone book and just peck dial every single number through it, you're going to, guess what? You're going to sell a bunch of homes. Yeah. Yeah. And that, so that, if you watch this show and you were looking for the magic formula, there it is, man. There it is, ladies and gentlemen. Brother. And if somebody, I was going to say, if somebody else has. As another one, please DM me, friend request me, because because uh, I haven't found it yet. I keep trying. The section below. <laughs> yeah, but just comment, or you can just share it with me and Mike privately. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> right, dude, it's always a, it's always my pleasure to have you on, brother. And I like I, 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 I like I watch you from afar, man, and I love seeing you do so well, and and, and how you guys have grown, and like the I know the world is just um, the world is a better place because of you and and your guys, man, and uh, so appreciate you. You know, you, you've always come from a place of abundance and you, there's, you're completely transparent. And, and I so appreciate that, brother. Same here, man. And we, we always uh, we love connecting with you and can't wait to see you again soon somewhere at one of the events. Yeah, man. So as always, like how do um, if somebody wants to reach out to you, you know, if they have questions about you know, how, you, how you're building your business, um, any of the tools that you're using, how do they get a hold of you, brother? So my email is Brett, B-R-E-T-T, at sell, S-E-L-L, with W-I-T-H. Sakura S I K O R A dot com. Uh, you can obviously just friend request me, message me through here too. And also my cell is nine seven three five nine oh eight two oh five. Awesome, awesome, awesome. As usual, I love sharing these stories week after week because I know this show is literally changing agents' financial lives, my own included. Do me a big favor if you know someone that might enjoy the podcast, please share it with them. And if you like the podcast, please go to wherever you listen to podcasts and subscribe. You want to jump on a 30 minute call with me for free for a business strategy session, go to meetmikewall.com. And Brett, we're going to put a bow on this one, my man. Thank you so much. Cool. Let's rock and roll. All right, bro. Thanks, man. See ya. Bye.